So, you know, it, I just ask you that gentle question of I wonder how good our children might be. And one of the big shocks in the show really has always been that as we go around the show, we see children doing exceptional stuff. Lots of people have got, but we keep limiting when that can happen. We limit how much they can do. So what we're looking at in Portland is really that sense of how well might they do. I'll give you a little example. This is um, um, a, a, a trivial example, really, but it's quite a nice one. <laughs> here's, my, here's my granddaughter. And um, how many people here are from Sweden? Oh, okay. we'll, go with, we'll go with two, two examples then. So the first one is cycling. Um, and you'll have seen little children on balance bikes um, learning to cycle. Now, I, I, how old were you when you learned? How old were you when you learned to ride a bike? Five. Well, that was precocious. Well, 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 well. <laughs> uh, how old were you when you learned? Six. Yeah. That's a... Six. Yeah. Five. Six. Six. So the, the smart kids are up the front here. You know, anybody? Anybody as late as nine or ten? Oh, people often are. I have a friend who's 37 who's just learning to write. So, <laughs> um, did anybody learn at two? Well, now of course, if you're parents, you'll know that, that all children learn. This is um, this is a two-year-old child learning to ride a bicycle. The very first time she sat on the bicycle, watch her feet; they come off the ground. She's balancing, working, cycling perfectly well. She can't stop. She hasn't learned that yet. You know, that's a whole other that's a whole other problem. You know, but um, well, that's pretty good. That's good cycling. And and by the way, if I if I then say, well, I wonder. I wonder what happened in a year's time when she had pedals on the bicycle, because it was the pedals that turned out to be the hard bit. Um, uh, maybe we can see this. Yeah, I think we can. So, granddaughter is Emily. This is my Facebook page, of course. And uh, in a moment, well, well, just while that loads, because I think this, the, the network's going a little, a little. So she just cycled off down the road, I mean, normally. Now, most children learn. Most children learn to cycle with stabilizers on their bicycle, or with a parent holding on to them, or maybe with a tricycle. Uh, but it turned out when we took all those things away, they learned a lot quicker. And perhaps um, an example you, you'd, you'd all recognize uh, better would be swimming. Here she was, at, here she is just, I think just before her second birthday, and as you'll, you'll, as you'll know, if you've got little children, when you put them underwater, they swim really well. They don't, they don't swim on the surface very well, but they swim. <laughs> and so here she is posing for her photograph at a swimming club. So the, the photographer sitting underwater with the camera. She swims up, has a little two-year-old pose, you know, smiles sweetly, and then swims off again. Now, again, you know, when you, most of you learned, you would have learned with armbands, or you would have learned with some support. So it's, it's a really interesting question here: is when you pull away the support, how early might they, how early might they swim? Because you still need adults, you still need parents, you still need other people in the system. Now this gets to be really interesting because where do we get that insight into how good all this might be? And one place, of course, is by listening to the students themselves. And there's a nice little example, or several here actually. One is from, um, I'm a professor in Spain these days, as well as England, in, uh, in Madrid. And here we are at the, uh, at the university running their global education forum. And uh, who do we find running the forum? It's children. And who do we find asking the questions of the presenters? They're more school children. And who's doing the summary of the day? It's more children still. And who's in the audience? Uh, it's old people. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one place we can hear about how good learning might be is always from listening to our students. And here's a little example from <coughs> um, Teachers Television, we helped set up Teachers Television, which is pretty exciting. And this is um, George Mitchell's school in East London, where they thought they'd try and make learning better, and they do it by asking the children, how can we do this better? So this is the extreme case of all this, where the school has simply said to the children, if you see good learning at any time, the first thing you want you to do is get out your mobile phones and take a picture of it. So at any time, during the school day, during teaching, if you see good learning happen, record it. 
so the children are building a log of what good learning looks like. Now this is interesting because in many schools, you know, children taking out their phone and taking a photograph is um, is threatening, is quite frightening. But and so do you think? Well, I'll just. Um, I'll talk over it while you, while you see it. The first project is about oh, yeah. working with students to capture outstanding learning from their perspective using mobile devices that they carry around all the time and to produce that into a formal report and a multimedia report that we can share with others and inform what we're going to do in the future. We've been asked by our assistant principal to start taking pictures of uh, outstanding learning. So basically, when we see uh, two of us delivering a really good lesson, and we basically record it and say, look, this is fantastic. And we basically describe the lesson, what's going on. Project 2 is about... So it's really interesting, isn't it? Now, the question is, how do you get all your children to take their phones out and start taking pictures? What works? How do you know that that's safe? And so what we've been involved with um, is this CloudLearn project, which uh, is here. And CloudLearn... Net, you'll find hugely useful. We've been crowdsourcing schools all around the world. What is effective practice with using Facebook in the classroom, Twitter?